Hello pre-calculus students and welcome to the, our last video here on the lesson in finding area and interpreting what that area means. And now we've so far we've done a lot of examples with uh, estimations and the sine function and now let's look at an example where we can make some sense of what the area underneath the curve is good for. So this says a rock is thrown straight up from level ground the velocity of the rock at any time in seconds is V of T equals 48 minus 32 T. A, graph the velocity function. So I think I can graph a pretty good one. This is linear. It has a y-intercept of 48 and it has an x-intercept of 1.5. Okay. To see how I did that, well the x-intercept set v equal to 0 and solve for t so negative 48 equals negative 32 t 48 negative 40 over negative 32 equals t so this is 1.5 the y-intercept just plug 0 in here for t and you got it so this is the t-axis and this is the velocity t okay. b at what time does the rock reach its maximum height? And more importantly, how do you know? Well, at max height, the velocity has to be equal to zero. So if you have a rock on the ground here that's being thrown up, it's going to come back down. Well, when it reaches its maximum point, by in order to change directions, it has to stop. So at this point, the velocity has to equal zero. And when looking at our graph here, when the velocity equals zero, time is equal to 1.5. So t equals 1.5 seconds. Simple enough. C, how far has the rock traveled at its maximum height? In other words, how far has it traveled between 0 and 1.5 seconds. So from 0 to 1.5 seconds, how far has it traveled? Well, we have the velocity function, so in order for us to find the, the distance travel, we just evaluate the area underneath the curve. Okay. So look back at the first page of your notes here, the first video is here, where we talked about going from velocity to uh, finding distance. So this is one half, the base of this thing is 1.5 times 48. And this should give us 36. And the units here are feet. Now for the really fun stuff. Uh, draw, uh, this is a typo, a sketch of the position function, s of t. Well, let's see. Since this rock is being thrown in the air, it has to go up and then it has to come back down. And we know, we know for a fact that the maximum height occurs at t equals 1.5 seconds. And that height how far has it traveled between 0 and 1.5? This is, in fact, this is another way of saying the max height. So it must reach the maximum point here and then come back down. And we know that parabolas here are symmetric over this vertex. So if this point is 0, 0, and it is because it's being launched from the ground, okay, it's launched from ground level, so 0, 0 is on here. And then the other point then must be 3. So just to label this, this is t in seconds. And this is s of t, which is the height in feet. Okay. Part E, write an equation for the position function. Well, let's see if we have enough information. This is a parabola. It has a vertex of 1.536. So we can just use 
uh, vertex form. So let's see. S of t is equal to, remember vertex form is a t minus the x-coordinate of the vertex squared, and you look up vertex form if you've forgotten, plus 36. Now we just need to somehow figure out what this a is equal to, and to do that we can use either of these points, 0, 0, or 3, 0. So I'm just going to use 0, 0 because that's much simpler. So this is 1.5 squared plus 36. So negative 36 equals 2.25a. So that means a is equal to negative 16. Okay. So our final equation then is that s of t is equal to negative 16 t minus 1.5 squared plus 36. And then I added another part, just because it's so fun, find s of t, s prime of t. And I guess I should add one more thing, explain the meaning of s prime. Okay. Well, we already have this equation, uh, s of t. is equal to negative 16 t minus 1.5 squared plus 36. So I'm going to uh, convert this into standard form because it might be a little bit easier for me to take the derivative of it. Okay, so I've done that right here. And I got negative 16 t squared plus 48 t. Okay, And all I, to do that, all I did was uh, FOIL or distributed t minus 1.5 quantity squared to get this expression, distributed the negative 16, and then the 36 and negative 36 cancel. So S prime, to take the derivative, remember this is a quadratic, and to take the derivative of a quadratic, this is A, here's negative 16, and this is uh, B, which is 48. So this is uh, 2AT plus B. So this is 2 times negative 16 plus 48 t. Sorry, there's a t in there. So this is negative 32t plus 48. Okay. Well, that was uh, a little bit tedious, but hopefully not too hard. Okay. Now let's look at what this really means. I mean, we took the derivative. Remember that s of t is position. So s prime of t is a measure of change in position over time, okay. which is another name for velocity. So what that means is that s prime of t is the velocity function. It is the velocity function. And that is uh, quite amazing because if you compare s of t here, which we just found, let's see, negative, we got here negative 32t plus 48. That is exactly the same, the same thing as this function here, 48 minus 32t. See? So this is a good way to check and see that everything works. We use this velocity function to do some thinking and figure out what the position function is. So now we should be able to look at the position function, take its derivative, and know that we get back to uh, the velocity. So it's a way to do kind of a nice uh, sanity check, but also to reinforce the concepts on here. So to sum up, I mean, over these courses of videos, you should understand a few things. First, uh, the meaning of the area underneath the curve, in, at least in the context of velocity and position. And then you should also know a couple different methods LRAM, RRAM, trapezoid methods. You should also know how to evaluate uh, exact definite integrals for certain types of functions, for simple ones. And finally, be able to do a word problem like this 
where you're combining lots of ideas together. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.